get the feeling you are in for something special tonight. It's a brisk evening in Cary, North Carolina. But time to crown a champion in NCAA Women's Soccer College Cup underway. Jen Hildreth, Julie Fowdy, our great crew on hand to bring this one to you. North Carolina in white, UCLA in blue. Julia Dorsey, one of those three in the back for North Carolina, also a national champion in lacrosse, played it forward. Lexi Wright, one of those players to keep an eye on. There are a lot of them, though, as it happens for both of these teams. Because we're saying that a lot. <laughs> straight from anywhere. Second time that these two programs have met in a national championship game. Last one coming in 2000. North Carolina victorious there. 2-1. Tar Heels leading the series overall, 11-2-2. But they did play earlier this season in Chapel Hill in September. North Carolina was ranked number one at the time. And UCLA came on the road to both North Carolina and Duke that trip. Looking to get in behind, not quite able to do so. See the redshirt freshman, Emmy Allen. Bridget Marin Valencia, freshman for UCLA. Not able to catch up to the ball through, but certainly that is a threat for these Bruins. <laughs> Nally Lemos, number 10 in the middle. Player that her coach Marguerite Alazaza said she felt was the best on the field for the Bruins in their semifinal win against Alabama. Yes, yeah, said hard to believe. Marguerite said hard to believe that's an 18 year old out there playing. You'll see what we mean as you yeah. keep an eye on her throughout this match. Here is Moxley, her free kick set up a goal for the Tar Heels in their semifinal victory against ACC Pro and defending national champion Florida State. And there is the history maker, Marguerite Awazaza, setting a very high bar. First coach to take her team to the College Cup in her first year as a head coach. She's been on this stage before as an assistant at Stanford. So knows what the College Cup feels like, knows what national championships feel like. Now trying to win one for UCLA would be their first since 2013. And that man right there knows a thing or two about winning national championships. <laughs> Been to a few. As well, that he has. This is the 27th NCAA final for North Carolina. They've won 21 times in the NCAA. And let's tack on one more before the NCAA started awarding out of all championships. In collegiate women's soccer history to have been to every NCAA tournament. And the Cardinals have continued to get back to this college cut stage, just haven't been able to win it since 2012. Here's Izzy Cox on the ball now, number 13. Over to Moxley. Dorsey. Emily Colton. Goes out for a throw. It'll be interesting to see. I think both teams take a lot of confidence out of that regular season meeting because even though North Carolina lost, they felt they played really well in the matchup, had the bulk of the possession and shots against the Bruins. But it was UCLA who got the big win. So Ali St. No number 21 on the ball for a few moments. Now Dorsey charging forward. She and Colton not on the same page. Lily Wheel in the back, Pac-12 Defender of the Year, number four for the Bruins, clearing the ball up the field. Set north, going out wide for Patterson, leading scorer for the Tar Heels this season. Emerson Elgin, number six, freshman who's been in the starting lineup pretty consistently in this postseason. In that third center back spot on the left-hand side. That back three, Tori Hansen, the captain in the middle for the Tar Heels, getting the ball now. Yeah, and it's interesting with that three back that UNC has played, and they switched it, as we talked about, just for the NCAA tournament, in particular to beat Notre Dame and Florida State. Check, check, did that. <laughs> 
um, is, is they do play a really aggressive three back. Often people call it a three back and those wing backs slide back so it becomes a five back, but not the case for UNC. They'll play with those three and as we know, UCLA plays with a three front. Well, let's talk about some keys for UCLA in this match, Julie, and what the Bruins will be looking for with well, their Fowdy free that, kicks. That first one is they have to be able, as everyone knows, UNC comes with the press, solve that press. Marguerite talked about Alabama and that semifinal being a dress rehearsal for this, and also that front line, that front three we just talked about playing against three backs has to have the bravery to take on. Cox right now with the ball out of feed over to Sintmore. Looked to flick it behind her, didn't quite get a good hold on the ball. And the chess match that ensues with this is if you get too deep UCLA, you can't put, so they're dropping into almost a 4-5-1 at the moment with only Raylan Turner up high. You can't get that pressure on those three center backs who are setting play. And it was more of a defensive stance for UCLA in the regular season meeting between these two. Talked to Coach Awazaza about that yesterday, and she was saying she wanted to make sure her team didn't come out with that same mindset. She feels they are a much different team, especially offensively right now, wanted to come out attacking. Dorsey, plenty of room to carry forward again. Moxley now on the ground in the box. Talia Della Pruitt's out of touch back. Colton picking it up, takes a shot with a left, and there's the first save of the match for Brisky. And this is patented UNC play. As soon as they lose the ball, what do they do? They get pressure and numbers around the ball, and then they're going to look to pounce. Limos, looking for options, goes wide. Sunshine Fontes is a talented trio in the midfield for UCLA. Fontes, number 50, Limos, number 10, and Jackie Gilday getting the start once again, number 27. Hanson on the back of Turner, nothing to be done there. And gives us a moment now, Julie, to look at some keys for North Carolina tonight. Yeah, I think for North Carolina, they have to disrupt that UCLA possession. You talked about that midfield being so good. They're going to try and do that with the press. And then the other thing Anson talked about is he, he said, we have to get the ball to Sintnor, Patterson, Della Peruta, our creative goal scorers on this team. Those are the change makers. Sintnor to Patterson, Cox crisscrossing to get on the end of it now. At the end line, stays in, touchdown, corner kick coming for the Tar Heels. And I'd say a great first seven minutes for the Tar Heels doing both of those keys, getting Sentinel on the ball, getting Patterson on the ball, disrupting so far the rhythm of UCLA. And we'll see if they can capitalize on that here. Now this has been what Coach Awazaza admitted has been a bit of an Achilles heel defending set pieces. North Carolina scored off one in the regular season from the corner. Sentinel's ball to Della Peruta. Patterson back in front of the goal and in the gloves of Brisky. Can't put it anywhere near her. She owns that space. Brick wall Brisky. And this is the thing about Lauren Brisky where she's been so good all season, so clean in her own six, coming for balls, holding balls, boxing balls high and wide when she needs to. Dorsey knocked off the ball. It is going to be a foul. Samantha Martinez, our referee in the center tonight. UCLA has afforded Dorsey this space, at least to this point, till she gets to midfield. Cox couldn't get through a couple of Bruin defenders. It's been a lot of North Carolina in the attack to start this match. 
Del Puta. Big tackle between the two players. Problem was neither of them got a foot on the ball, so it just goes out of bounds and is a goal kick for UCLA. Oh my goodness, Jaden Perry gets a body check on that one. Whew. Coming across the other center back, just getting in the way. Talia Della Peruta, junior out of coming Georgia, was out the first 10 matches this season and had an injury she picked up playing with the USU 20 team at the World Cups. Has been working her way back in, but has had a good NCAA tournament, had three goals in three games coming into the semifinal. Yeah, Anson mentioned it's taken Talia a little bit to get back fitness-wise as well. But he said her confidence, her fitness is back. Turner hasn't had much time on the ball to start this match for UCLA. Lana Tar Heels immediately in her vicinity. And she has a chance to get a foot on it, but UCLA as a team hasn't had a chance to get much of a foot on the ball really yet. Good defensive work by Emily Colton in that holding midfield spot. There's two sixes with Libby Moore and Colton who like to sit in there, protect that three in front of them. And that will be their task today. Disrupt, disrupt, disrupt. Do not let UCLA get some possession and rhythm going. Big ball over the top, into the box for Sentinel. Cross! Finally is cleared out. <laughs> Turner. Fontes giving chase for UCLA. Still in play. Alexi Wright was wide open. Dorsey had to make that play. Still over Bruins finally with a little bit of the ball to play with. Manny Desiano, one of the leaders on that back line for UCLA. Number 11 in the right back spot. Had to sit in the stands last time her team was in the College Cup. Both she and Lauren Brisky were injured and were not in the traveling party for UCLA that year. So a full circle type feeling for those players as they get back to this stage, now with a chance to help their team win it. Another foul called against the Bruins. Here's that earlier chance. Dorsey with the great ball in. Sentinor wants to get a hold of it coming across dangerous. Maddie Desiano just getting a back heel on it to clear it out. Almost sets up a a goal with that first touch. Able to clear it though with that back heel. But North Carolina looking dangerous. Right, intercepting the ball, but she's really all alone for UCLA. Three Tar Heels in front of her. And Dorsey, as Anton Dorn says, my lacrosse player who's just also happens to be a soccer player has become so darn good at the center back spot, he can barely take her off the field. Dorsey at North Carolina on a lacrosse scholarship could become the first female by our research to ever win two NCAA championships, same year, different sports. Patterson stopped in her tracks. Fontes. And again, UNC having success. UCLA unable to build. They go into a deeper shell. I just worry about this low block for UCLA because you know how UNC operates. They're going to pounce on that. At some point, you got to get higher. You got to get some pressure on the ball. Dorsey at Cox breaking off in front. Instead, now it comes to the feet of Moxley. Back in September, North Carolina held 66% of the possession in that match. But UCLA just capitalizing on their opportunities. They came back to win it after North Carolina scored first off a corner kick in UCLA. Eventually winning it 2-1, knocking North Carolina from the number one spot in the country and taking it over themselves. Hey, 
So if you're going to be in a more defensive shape, Julie, you have to be critical in the opportunities you do get. And UCLA certainly was able to do that back in September. Right. Nope. It's coming back the other way. Julia Dorsey having herself a game. Here is a look at that hold. Lexi Wright trying to get around her. To be fair, it looked like both were, going, were holding each other. Not sure I saw that as clearly as I needed to. Carolina in control so far in this match. Just one shot, though, a lot of possession. And a UCLA team that has a renewed emphasis on defense this year. Bending, but certainly not breaking so far. Haven't had a lot of the ball. They're having to be patient with Stan. This onslaught of Tall Hill possession and attack. Can they be good in these moments? Which I was Aza saying the semifinal, she felt was the best team, best game her team had had all season. That when they won possession against a heavy pressing team in Alabama, they were patient, they were good at getting into the attack. Bessiano. And it seems just about everywhere when UCLA gets into the attacking third, they look outnumbered. There always seem to be two or three Tar Heels around the ball. No whistle here. Ball out of the reach of Wright. Got some basketball for you. The 28th annual Jimmy V Classic coming up at Madison Square Garden again this year. It's tomorrow night on ESPN and the ESPN app. Number 17, Illinois taking on number two, Texas at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then 24th ranked Iowa squaring off against number 15, Duke. Always a great night for a great cause. And to donate to the Jimmy V Foundation, go to v.org. Yeah, and to, to your point, Jen, about that, that first look for UCLA getting a little bit more rhythm, I mean, uh, the challenge with dropping off as deep as they are right now is the wingbacks for North Carolina and Moxley on the right and Avery Patterson on the left, they're pushing high, so they're pushing as almost like a forefront with the two nines up front naturally. And what that does is it keeps the outside backs of UCLA staying at home. Moxley guarded closely by Wright. There's the, the right wing back we were just talking about and Avery Patterson on the other side. And when the two outside backs for UCLA are having to stay home, then you don't get as much offense generated. As we mentioned, they were responsible for all three goals in that semifinal against Alabama between Desiano and McMahon. And McMahon, a goal and an assist in that trio of goals for UCLA in the semi. North Carolina has it taken away. Bruins see if they can turn it into something they can out of bounds it goes and that midfield that had bossed the game so much for Marguerite Awazaza against mm -hmm. Alabama in the semifinal I have not been able to imprint on this game yet at all yeah and it has as we know historically that has always been the first challenge of playing a UNC team regardless of generation of UNC team is that is always in their DNA they will press they will fight Anson calls it biting. 
You shut them down, you don't let them face, and you bite. And that is always, I think, the concern of any head coach. Margarita was also talked about it as well, is how will her team handle the press of North Carolina? Right now in a low block, so not much of a press themselves on the other side. Fifth foul by the Bruins. Sets up this free kick for Moxley, who scored off one in the semifinal. Goes to Dorsey. That was the combo that led to a goal against Florida State. Not quite this time. But what a great ball this is coming across. Just a touch is all you need. Like Dorsey is trying to get on it. Actually very unlucky for Dorsey because it goes right to Brisky. But that is a beautiful ball in by Moxley. Dorsey scoring her first goal of the season in the semifinal off of the service from Moxley on a free kick. And so truly, even with all of the ball that North Carolina has had, the most dangerous look so far coming from set pieces. Six foul now against UCLA. None whistled so far yet against the Tar Heels. Hansen can provide such great long service up the field. Good read by Brisky again, quick off her line. Makes that an easy play. And I think the challenge, too, of getting that possession for UCLA, only three in their midfield, 4-3-3 three, three, three they're playing against really a five midfield for UNC, a lot of numbers in that midfield. McMahon, one of the first times we've seen her really able to get forward, but now out of position, and Lelokruta may be thinking she had a runner closer to the ball than she did. Real able to handle and reset alongside Perry. Two center backs for the Bruins. Turner. <coughs> Ten goals on the season for Raylan Turner. Cannot pick out the right ball. Well, it is a fantastic time to be a soccer fan. Of course, Julie, you've got the World Cup going on, but there are a few changes to yes. be aware of in case you haven't been watching a lot of college soccer throughout the season. Yes, the clock is different. No stoppage time in the college game. Subs unlimited, and you are allowed a re-entry in college soccer in the second half. Of course, don't have any of those in the World Cup. Video review, we do have it, but it is very different than what they have with <laughs> FIFA. They have an entire video assistant referee VAR crew watching every play and able to recommend it to the officials on the field. We don't have that in college soccer. Only certain specific situations that we're able to review. Just because they don't have the eyes to be able to watch it like they do in the international game. Yeah. Not and at the for, moment. And for maybe those Alabama fans who are still wondering about that semifinal goal call back, can't review that yeah. either. You can review goal, no goal, but only if the ball goes over the line. That was an offside call that, that took that goal away. And there are six specific situations that can be reviewed. So as I mentioned, goal, no goal, but that is specifically to look whether the ball crossed the line or not. You can identify players in case a disciplinary issue arises, fight occurs. And then you can look back to see whether a foul occurred in or out of the penalty area. So now we're all up to date and educated and <laughs> Sentinel <laughs> certainly can shoot from distance there. That, she made that one a little easier on Brisky than she typically does. And I'm looking, you're about halfway through this first half and I'm thinking if you're UCLA, You've got to make it more difficult for UNC. It's far too easy. No pressure on the ball when they're turning. They're finding gaps. They're finding seams. 
They're dropping into that low block, and I get it. You don't want to engage in this chaotic battle back and forth and make it so physical, but you've got to get some pressure on the ball because right now they're actually fortunate that they're not down a goal with the way UNC is playing. Yeah, and there's just no rhythm to be had for UCLA, a team that I would say feasted upon rhythm in such a great season that they've had, 21 wins. The next one would be a school record and obviously a trophy if they can get there. Moxley couldn't hang on to it. Now Turner, he needs to wait for some help. And the two players there for North Carolina do their job. Levy Moore sneaking in, stealing it away. Patterson loves to go one-on-one, -on -one, but that's why you don't give her those one-on-ones. Team defending by UCLA. More back wide to Patterson. Couple of moves, get this North Carolina heavy crowd in and on. Great crowd on hand tonight. And I think if you're UNC halfway through this house, you're recognizing this is their chance to pounce. Without a lot of pressure on the ball, with UCLA dropping, they've got to get something from this because it's only so long before that Bruin beast comes out. <laughs> and we've seen how good they can be with possession and some rhythm. Colton could turn one quick touch in the box. It goes all the way through. Coverage of NCAA championships will continue with the Men's College Cup semifinals Friday, December 9th, 6 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. Eastern right here on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Men's College Cup, you can log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. And you see Creighton Syracuse first up on Friday and then Pitt, Indiana. That's what you've got coming on the men's side. Both teams making a substitution just a few moments ago. Maddie Dali, number five, a speedy freshman. Keep an eye on hers. Here comes some pressure from North Carolina. Gonna handle those goal kicks carefully if you are UCLA. Allie Cook, the player that's come on in place of Turner up top for the Bruins. A chance in the box for Sunshine Fontes, UCLA! Hits the side of the net, and that is a warning shot fired. Exactly what you've been talking about, Julie. North Carolina unable to do anything with all the possession they've had, and a great chance here. Oh, and this is exactly the player you want on the ball. Sun Sunshine Fontes has been so lethal. We know what she's done at the under-17 level. Youth national team, their all-time leading scorer with 24 goals, coming back from some injuries but she has had just a phenomenal season. And that's the danger of not being able to get one in this first half if you're North Carolina, because you just have too many outlets on that Bruin team who can punish you for it. And boy, that would have been against the run of play if they had snuck that one in. And here's the other thing, going back to that September game early in the season when UCLA came down here, is the thing both teams talk about, Jen, is how much play UNC had in that game, how much domination, yet who won that game? <laughs> UCLA. <laughs> UCLA, and so Anson actually said, I'm a little concerned because we had so much domination that there will be a lack of motivation. I said, but you didn't win. He goes, I know, but still, we dominated that much that I'm a little concerned there's a lack of motivation. But having said that, they've learned that lesson is possession and domination means nothing unless you can convert. Right. Got to put the ball in the back of the net. And North Carolina outshot UCLA in that meeting. 16 to 7. Corner kicks, 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they had their chances. A couple more changes for North Carolina. Oh, Ali Gambone of the captains, number 16, had a big goal in the semifinal. First of that match. She's on along with Maggie Pierce in the midfield. Here's Darlene. Desiano made it a goal of hers to score a goal in this season. 
graduate student able to do so this year. Three goals, including one in the semi. Look to go off the arm. All right, but no call. Here is that ball they're trying to get Lexi right in. Handball, it looks like. Was it called? Not having much success getting Lexi right into the game. This is a player with some incredible pace that can stretch defenses, get in behind. We haven't seen her come alive yet. Yeah, I think you could say the one thing that North Carolina has done really well is all of this possession they've had has been really good defense, keeping UCLA's marquee players off the ball in dangerous spots. Right, a quick touch, trying to escape the pressure she felt coming. Here comes McMahon. Right. Outside of the area. Lemos, one of two players to start every match this season for UCLA as a freshman. Both of these teams scoring three goals in their semifinals. None to be had here yet in this national championship game. The last one UCLA won was on this field in 2013. Of course, North Carolina has also won their share here in Cary, not far from their home, three national titles here. Gambone, it's one of her first touches now, takes a look up at the goal. Right, saw a lot of room in the middle of the field. That's where she heads. And how quickly that space goes away. <laughs> well, one of the things Margarita Alvazaza told us as her first year as a head coach, she said the first inner squad they played, 11 v 11, she said the score was 11, or no, seven to six. And she went, oh goodness, we're gonna have to work on some de defense. And she said that has been really the key to our success this year is that dichotomy. She says, unless you're disciplined defensively, you can't be creative offensively. And you're getting a sense of them having to really lock in defensively against this UNC team right now. Yeah, I think you check the box for the disciplined defense thus far by UCLA, but they have not been able to get the other side of that equation, not in this match. Some offense to come out of it. Little Sunshine Fontes look, a little pop over the head. Thanks very much. I mean, th this is such a fun player to watch. I, I catch a lot of UCLA games in Southern California and seeing her back and healthy and playing to her form. And I mean, this is a player who can crank it from about 30 yards, Jen, and blow through the net <laughs> with the force she puts on the ball from, with both feet. Yeah. Looks like we're gonna see our first card the match it goes against the sophomore Jaden Perry for UCLA mm. that one is dangerous as well because Sentinel are just coming watching the ball even from here set pieces can be very dangerous especially with the service that Tori Hansen is able to deliver for North Carolina <laughs> senior with an incredible journey coming into this her final year. Such a big role she's played on this team this season. Not to play it on the ground. Like, 
There's Fontes. Great youth career with the U.S. team. As you mentioned, coming back into form, what a great ball out wide. Finding some space. And Valencia. And he did get it to Lemos. Bruins keeping it alive some way, somehow. To look closely, there are both shades of blue sprinkled throughout, but I think more of that Carolina blue <laughs> certainly here in Cary, North Carolina. Trying to urge on this Tar Heel team that, as you jokingly said in our conversation with Anson Dorrance, and Anson years has felt like an eternity <laughs> since winning a I, national championship. I did say it's been a decade, Anson, and Anson years that's a lot of years. <laughs> Uh, he, and he, I said, what are you gonna what are you gonna tell the team? He goes, I would never burden them with my failures. I'm not gonna say, oh, let's win one for the Gipper. <laughs> UCLA. But you know they would love to win one for him. I mean, 21 NCAA titles and just the career he has had. Next in line after 21 is three national titles to give you a sense of that domination. And the thing that is always striking to me is, is how that domination has been so consistent. Yes, they haven't won in the last 10 years, but they're always in the midst, the mix. And now with the parity we have in women's soccer, that in itself is remarkable. Yeah, they have not won since 2012, true, but this is their fifth college cup in the last seven years. Yeah. Appeared in every NCAA tournament, as you said. And there's one more note on, on Anson that our great statistician, Freddie Kiger, was kind enough to provide us and remind us of that Anson has never appeared in a team photo when they have won the mm -hmm. national championship. Yeah. He wants it to be about the players. Yeah. These North Carolina players Trying to break through this UCLA defense, maybe now with a chance in the box, Endor. Had a block that took a little of the sting off the shot. Well done defensively by UCLA because, again, we showed in the open this player and Ali Centaur, when she can get it on either foot and just have a half gap, a little window, she can be lethal. And she was a player not really at full strength in September when these teams met, she's coming off an ACL injury that took what would have been her true freshman season last year, took that away. Now, Sam Meza was also a part of that match, the All-American for the Tar Heels, who has not been able to play at all in this NCAA tournament. That is a huge loss. There are some changes personnel-wise. You see that Tar Heel back line, that's been one of the big storylines all season, as well as you look at the work that Sidnor has done in the NCAA tournament. Half of those goals coming in the NCAA tournament. Five and five, pretty good ratio. Still scoreless in our championship match from Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. North Carolina Tar Heels looking for NCAA title number 22 for UCLA. It would be number two in program history. Doing it under a first year head coach in our group, Alizaza. Win the ball back. Tar Heels do just that. Pierce, one of the players, came in off the bench. North Carolina not subbing quite as literally as they have been known to do. I want to give you our Week 13 Monday Night Football matchup. Tom Brady and the Bucks leading the NFC South. They'll host Alvin Kamara and the Saints at Raymond James Stadium. That's at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific over on ESPN. ESPN for Cortez and the ESPN map. And of course, we've got the Manning cast back on ESPN too. First time I've seen Coach Alzaza stand up, actually. <laughs> that, that's her resting position the entire game, mostly. I said to her, how is that possible? 
could not do but it. But you stay so relaxed? Yes. Yes. Super impressive. Both teams making changes during that last break. Tori Della Peruta, the younger sister of Talia, coming on place of center up top, and Tori scored Tar Heels' only goal in the regular season meeting against UCLA. Here is Gambone, full head of steam going forward, ball at her feet. Dali on the ground, just can't get there, and the UCLA defenders have put themselves in good positions just about every time that entry pass has come. And it, it's going to be really interesting how this shapes up second half tactically, because it is, has largely been this chess match of tactics and I think UNC has got it very right they're sending a lot of players and Moxley and in particular Patterson which what it does is it neutralizes that outside back position for UCLA we saw so much play set through McMahon and Desiano in that outside back position there's Ali Cook running after the ball the transfer from Oregon Carmen Reyes, number 24, also on for UCLA up in the attack as they made a few changes. Under five to play in the first half. Still in search of our first goal in this one. North Carolina have outscored their opponents in the NCAA tournament 16 to five so far. UCLA, it's been 12 to three in their run to this championship game. For North Carolina, those 16 goals in the NCAA tournament, their most since 2012. Last time they won it. Dorsey probably came the closest to a Tar Heel goal in this first half on a free kick that was sent in by Moxley, the player on the ball now. Good ball. Good well. Back to Moxley in the box. Nobody getting near the brick wall. I'll take it away from Brisky. Fifth shot of this first half for North Carolina, just two for UCLA. <laughs> Sophia Cook, freshman out of Huntington Beach, California. Gets a little help from Desiano, now Cook back to Limos. Corner. That's what Allie Cook is trying to do is to tie heels around her, and this does wind up in a corner. First of the match for UCLA, one with one for North Carolina as well. These have been few and far between. Can they be a difference maker as they so often are? You see that traffic in that six around Emmy Allen. All the players. Fontes' ball headed up, still alive. Bicycle kick back. Quite a full bicycle, but we'll count it. And it counts for another corner as well. What a good idea this is, and why not? It gets cleared. Not quite entirely Lily Real. Oof. I think she was Emmy Allen was probably safe, but still gave it a touch. Let's make sure it goes wide. From the other side now, UCLA will give it a try. Benning toward the goal, and Allen, with a 40, takes it out of the air. Spoke to Emmy Allen 
coming into this game and into this series, this semifinal. And she talked about the need to really prove herself. She felt like, hey, maybe people have underestimated me and it's time to show what I can do. And she's done that in this College Cup. I've really done it all season long. The red shirt freshman has been holding it down for a very good Tar Heel defense that led the ACC in goals against Stafford. All right, 33 seconds until halftime. Here's what we've got coming up for you. Special guest, Kate Markcraft will be joining us. Kate in the house. And we'll talk to you about the V-Week call to action. And a little special tournament that went on connects to that. We'll tell you more about that. A little football. Yeah. And we'll look back at our first half as well. A scoreless one so far in this national championship. It looks like that's how it's going to stay, Julie. 0-0 zero, zero after our first 45. And it is going to be interesting to see these changes at halftime for sure. But I think UNC is going to be pleased with that first half and the domination of it. What Anson will talk about is, again, domination means nothing unless you can get on the board as well. Well, let's hear from UCLA head coach Marguerite Alizaza. She joins us now. Marguerite, your thoughts on this first half and maybe what changes you might be considering for the second 45? Um, I thought after the first 15 minutes, things really settled down and we started to be able to find a rhythm. Things we'll look to do in the second half, I think, defensively, um, be a little more aggressive, and then attacking-wise, pick and choose our times to go forward. I think we could have developed a lot more attack if we had actually slowed down a little bit. What, what, when you say get a little more aggressive defensively, what will that look like, Marguerite? Um, just choosing times to send our 7 or 11 to press, yep. not relying so much on our 9 to do the work of, of two or three players. Well, thank you so much for your time. We'll let you get to your team. Thank you. This UCLA team has prided itself on being adaptable. We'll see what changes they may bring out in our second half. First half of this NCAA tournament without a goal for the Tar Heels. Both the Bruins and the Heels scoreless after 45. Welcome back to Cary in North Carolina. UCLA, North Carolina going head to head for the national championship scoreless after our first 45 minutes and we have a lot of North Carolina fans in the house cheering their team on. That team, of course, led by Anson Dorrance. Anson, your team, a lot of possession in that first half. No points to show for it. How do you change that? Well, uh, they've got a very good goalkeeper. And how do we know this? Well, they beat us earlier in the year. And honestly, one of the reasons is their goalkeeping was outstanding. And a lot of our attacks, we're just floating balls in there, and they're picking them off, and that's just not going to work. So we've tried to encourage our players in the flank to shoot the ball across the six, to you know, whip them in there so that uh, we could, might get a, you know, a deflection like we did against FSU to finish one uh, because we can't just float those balls in there and uh, hope their goalkeeper is going to make a mistake. She's not. We're going to have to do a lot of better job with our final balls in there. And then we're hoping uh, that we've got some pace up top. Uh, we've got to have more variety right now. We're too comfortable keeping possession. And we want to play the perfect combination, the direct and indirect game. And right now we're just uh, interested in keeping possession. That's not good enough. We have to take some risks. And one of the risks is to try to get one of our speedsters in. We have some pace. Let's see if we can get in behind. So every now and again, let's uh, look for the occasional direct ball. Always great things to look for, Anson. Thanks so much. Thank you. So I think that was a bit of the message, Julie, from both teams to be willing to roll the yeah. dice a little bit more, uh, take some risks. Yeah, and you have to. You have to take those chances. And it's a risk-reward game for sure, but Anson knows best, having been here so many times, that you got to create your own luck. Heard from Marguerite Awazaza going into the halftime break there, leading her team to this national championship game. Her first year as a head coach from the big storylines of this matchup tonight. We get going with our second half. North Carolina in white, starting off with the ball. UCLA in blue. Bruins keeping this Tar Heel attack 
quiet enough in that first half to keep him out of the goal. Some goalkeeping praise certainly heaped upon Lauren Brisky by Anton Dorrance. Looks to be the same. 11 that started the game for North Carolina out on the field. One change for UCLA is Allie Cook, number 33, is out there to start the second half in place of Marin Valencia in the UCLA attack. I expect we'll see Maddie Dahlin relatively soon, though, the freshman who brings probably the most pace, and there's a lot of it on this North Carolina team, but Anson specifically mentioning a speedster that they were going to bring onto the field. Emerson Elgin to St. North. And to Dorn's asking his team to play better balls across the box when they got it into the flanks. This one goes out for a throw for the Tar Heels. St. North, five goals in this NCAA tournament. She is fouled. This is going to be an early free kick and what amounts to a very short corner kick look for the Tar Heels. St. North getting around the corner, comes back, and that's where Desiano clips her. I mentioned this in the first half with this UCLA team that prides itself on defense one of the areas they've struggled has been in defending set pieces. They lost two games this year. All three goals scored in those two losses came on set pieces. Two corner kicks, one penalty kick. You see Dorsey lining right up in front of Brisky, trying to get in the way. Hansen, number 22, the center back, really will be a target on that back post as well. It'll be Moxley to take it for the Tar Heels. Puts it on the ground. Claudia Della Peruta with her left foot handed out of bounds. Now it'll be a corner for North Carolina. Their second of the match, first of this second half. Oof, what a good header that was by Raylan Turner to get it out of danger because that was going on a beeline to that back post. Emily Moxley. Looking for Hansen. Moore misplayed the ball, but nobody there to punish her for it as you saw why Turner was in the box helping to defend on those set pieces. She would have been the player up there to try to pounce on that misplayed ball. Emerson Elgin, a freshman out of New Jersey, has made her way into the starting lineup out of Patterson. Looking for a foul and then given by a referee, Samantha Martinez. It's been a physical game from the Bruins. 11 fouls committed by UCLA. Also one yellow card shown in the first half. Handball is the call on this particular play. Getting the Bluebirds. Yeah, I don't know if oh. I, I disagree with the crowd. <laughs> that, one, that looked a, a little interesting, that call. Sent Nora thinking that she got put to the ground. But pay close attention to these first 15 minutes in particular of the second half. It is where North Carolina really will try to come out after their opponent. And where if you remember the semifinal, Julie, they really put it on to Florida State. Wound up leading that game three nothing before the Seminoles were able to add two more goals later in the second half. Sunshine Fontes had some time and space. We'll want better with it. A little bit more positive, though, for UCLA because they're possessing a little higher. So much of their possession has been in their defensive third. Elgin put it at the feet of Turner, who now wins her way back onto the ball. Raylan and Turner. In the box for the Bruins. Gets a little help, and it is right at Allen. Better indeed. 
And again, Raylan Turner just nipping that ball, getting around Elgin. That's the touch that gets her in the box and dangerous good things happen. It's a little bit long, that touch. Emmy Allen in the perfect spot though. Fontes gets a hold of it just directly at the keeper. And you could feel Turner wanting to get herself a little more involved in this game. Hungry had six shots in the semifinal, three of those on goal. Of course, one goal of those shots. The game winner and the comeback win for the Bruins against the Tar Heels in September. Had the game winner against Duke on that road trip as well. Won that Margarita Awazaza called the dress rehearsal. And when UCLA got on the plane to leave North Carolina in September, she said, let's make sure we come back. <laughs> Here they are. Patterson. Always so good with the ball at her feet. Loses it this time. It's been even better setting up her teammates. Five assists for Patterson in the NCAA tournament more than any other player. Turner a little out of control. It is a foul called in Sentinel. Here is the foul. Turner in a wider position playing the nine earlier in the first half. Now she's playing in that right wing position. This UCLA team not afraid to switch up positions, systems during the course of the game. That was one of the foundations that Nawazaza tried to lay in this her first year with the team. Great support on hand here for the Tar Heels, including some of the other coaches here supporting it. And Dorothy's Courtney Banghart, women's <laughs> basketball coach in the middle. Jenny Levy on the left side. National take it, take selfie. It a little selfie. <laughs> Look for that on Twitter. Tar Heels supporting Tar Heels. Yeah, Jenny Levy winning that national title with the lacrosse team. This on her brain. Yeah. Dorsey on the ball just about. That would have timed up perfectly. There is Julia Dorsey. National champion and Courtney Banghart's basketball team off to a great start in women's basketball as well. Of the 48 NCAA championships that have been won at North Carolina, 35 of them have come from women's teams. Of course, 21 from this soccer team. And their great history. Good ball. Sentinor has some options now, has Cox in the middle. Mallory Sentinor, the redshirt freshman. Can't quite make anything of it. Really well defended by number 15, center back Jaden Perry. Doesn't give her that gap or that angle to crank one. And that center back pairing with Lily Real and Jaden Perry has just been so steady and stable. You contrast that with all the injuries that North Carolina has had in that center back position. The challenges, losing Macy Bell first game of the season, they're all American. And then you go down the list. Yeah, I believe it was the game against UCLA. They lost Bell's replacement, Kaylee Herr, a freshman yeah. who'd come in to play. Abby Allen has played on the back line. She's out. Dorsey missed the last four games of the regular season. Moxley. Colton turns the corner and earns the corner for North Carolina. You feel like both teams have heeded what we heard their coaches say to, to be a little more aggressive, to not be afraid yep. to pick your moments to go. Take the to and we'll see what this service to Anson's point. If you're floating these corner kicks into that six, 
Brisky's going to be all over that ball. Got to get some pace behind this one. Moxley. Little bounce back out for Moore. Toward and too close to Brisky. And what a beautiful thing for a team in a defense when the goalkeeper can play such a big role and owns that box with such confidence. And North Carolina in this match, knowing they can't put it anywhere near Lauren Brisky. Got to be that ball that teases her just enough. Maybe makes her a little uncertain. We haven't seen it yet. Ali Limos, really talented freshman. Trying to start this sequence of events for UCLA, but it's out of bounds. Good glimpse at just how easily Ali Lemos gets out of pressure. Turns one way, wiggles the other. 28th annual Jimmy V Classic coming your way from Madison Square Garden tomorrow night on ESPN and the ESPN app. Illinois, currently number 17, going against number two, Texas. It's 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then Iowa and Duke squaring off. Always a great night for a great cause and to donate to the Jimmy V Foundation, go to v.org. Three subs coming on for North Carolina. One of those a player I mentioned, Maddie Dahlin. And keep an eye on number five. She's going to be that speed factor that Anson specifically referenced when we talked to him at halftime. Gambone and Pierce, the other two substitutions for North Carolina, who are having to defend at the moment. That's something they had to do very often in the first half. Fontes cannot get it through, but does get it back. Here's Dolly, state track champion out of Minnesota for the Tar Heels. It has been quite an addition this her freshman year. Good tackle by Ali Lemos. So that that pace doesn't become a factor. As you talked about, Jen, with Darlene bringing that and fresh legs as well. I remember in college soccer, you are allowed a re-entry in the second half. So you will most likely, especially for North Carolina, see some of these players go off and come back on in the second 45 minutes. Oxley, oh, she's been up a lot. This is Gambone, had a goal in the semifinal. Dalene, back wide for Moxley. She does get the cross through the head. Goal, North Carolina, Avery Patterson. Just as Anson talked about, if you're going to send it across the face of the goal, you got to put some pace on it. Just a little bit too much pace for Brisky to come. She decides to stay on her line. And what a ball this is. Moxley getting a little half turn. Gets her hips around it. And it's Avery Patterson with the beautiful header, Maddie. Desiano in a position. She gets position instead, Patterson. And there it is, the one goal that has been elusive in that first half. And it comes off the Moxley service. A better ball, right? That's what they were looking for. And what a finish by Avery Patterson, her team leading 12th goal of the season. And, and, and let's just put an exclamation point on that ball across. By Moxley. To be Avery able to get Patterson. around it when your hips are facing the inline is so hard to Assisted do. And she did just Emily that quickly. Let's see how the Bruins respond. Fontes trying the shot from distance blocked. Does bounce out. Still alive for the Bruins in their attack in third. Dorsey snuffing that out before McMahon can really get going. I actually think this will be good for UCLA in a sense that they're going to have to start pushing and pressing. They've been playing in such a low block, and I think passively, defensively, 
This is going to get them forward and higher in their first position. I don't think any UCLA fan is going to say it was probably good for them. <laughs> well, I see in what terms you're saying, of though. getting them out of that block, I just feel like it was way too conservative still. North Carolina now trying to do what they could not in the regular season against UCLA, which was to hold on to the lead. Tar Heels scored first in that one, and UCLA coming back to win it 2-1. Gambon wins it for North Carolina, which has the momentum in the crowd. A little more into the match after the goal. 59th minute. Avery Patterson heading one home to put the Tar Heels out in front. North Carolina in search of what would be their 22nd NCAA championship tonight. This UCLA team what a year they've had. You sense still more to say, more to show in this match. Here's Desiano Turner. Keeps it out her feet long enough. Found Fontes. Turner, tough angle to come from to win the ball and is whistled for the foul. And you can see the frustration on some of those UCLA faces because they're used to having and dictating the possession and the tempo of the game. And they've just been unable to do that. And that's where it's just, it gets so frustrating to play against a team like UNC because they get numbers behind the ball. They double back on everything. Anson calls it the moral imperative of a player in front of you has to double back. That's the moral imperative of the way they defend. And so there's always number, there's always chaos around the ball. And when you're a team that's used to really dictating and bossing games, it can get frustrating. Right, chasing the ball down in the box. Dorsey, calm as you please. Wow, no foul called there against Real. North Carolina charging forward. Moore loses it. It's getting a little frantic. And McMahon giving it to her center back, Perry, to try to reset things a little bit. Lemos, does she need to be more involved for UCLA to keep this rolling? A touch here helps to set up what could be an opportunity. Cook at the end line, right in front of the goal. Turner is there. So, too, were a couple of Tar Heel defenders. You do sense a renewed energy from UCLA now that the team is chasing. Really good cover by Julia Dorsey there. Shot blocked. One of the first times some real sustained possession in the attacking third for UCLA in this match. McMahon, goal and an assist in the semifinal. Put it right to Dorsey. Keep your eye on number 19 in blue. See if she does get to this part of the field a little more often than she was able to in the first half. She can be so instrumental. Looking to set up Turner. Gilde back out wide. Ball sent through, headed up. And it does eventually run out of space, but it will be a corner for UCLA. Yeah, and if you're UCLA, you keep this pace going. You can see the fatigue setting in. It's been a long season for both teams. But it's this urgency that's giving them some success right now. 
Sunshine Fontes from the corner looking for the header. Dorsey won it. Now it's misplayed. Still alive. It was an open goal. Couldn't be finished off by UCLA. Lexi Wright asking for a look, getting bumped. But this is the ball that's rolling around. She just can't get her foot over it, nor has the time to let it come down. And all you can do is get under this. She's thinking it came off Dorsey as well. But you could see Allie Cook there right in front of North Carolina goalkeeper Emmy Allen, I think played it fairly, but Allen could not get to the ball. Looking for the ball through was Lemos. Cook. Fontes. Desiano. Turner trying to time it right to work around Elgin. Does enough for the corner. Fourth of the matchup coming for UCLA. He probably feels a bit encouraged after the last one, getting Allen to come you out. She didn't get the ball, and they do it again. This time it's Ali Limos who's going to take the corner. It was Fontes on the last one. So look for a different type of delivery, perhaps. Team leader in assist for the Bruins is Limos. Closer to the goal, it goes too close in the end to Allen. Good hold in that traffic by Emmy Allen. You can see all that traffic in front of her having to navigate it all and to be able to hold it through all of that, well done. You know what I appreciate in there was the last one. It was Allie Cook, number 33, who was right in front of Allen again. That time, Allen kept her hands on her back, maintained yep. a little space so that she could move and come up and make the play. But the Bruins really pressing now, forcing North Carolina to defend. And this is a North Carolina team that lost four matches on the season in all four of those matches. They had scored first. Can they hang on this time around and win themselves another national championship? They haven't do a lot of defending. That continues. Desiano up over her head in the box. Desiano at the near post. And a good, clean, well positioned by Emmy Allen. Clean that one up. Desiano just overran that one. It over, got over hit a little bit beyond her. But making that run on the back post so critical. And finally seeing a little bit from those outside backs, which had been largely neutralized by the wing backs for North Carolina that entire first half. Patterson, I think a little surprised she had as much space as she did. Found Sentinel. And Darlene was wide open to Sentinel's left. Darlene on it now. Cuts it back a couple of times. Good fall for Moore. Gambon keeps it alive. Moore. Not too dangerous on that attempt. Both coverage of NCAA championships continues in the men's college cup semifinals. That's coming your way on Friday at 6 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA men's college cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Syracuse, the ACC champion in that first matchup Indiana. In semifinal number two for the men in the College Cup. Good looking ball out wide. UCLA still on the attack. It is McMahon. Lily Real does such a good job in that center back position of cutting angles, cutting balls, reading play early. Allie Cook, Sophia Cook has also come onto the field, number nine for UCLA. Seven goals, four assists. How about that for a freshman year for Sophia Cook? She's come into that 10 position for Sunshine Fontes, give her a little break. 
With the game winner in the quarterfinal against Virginia in overtime, Sophia Cook. One of those goals that you mentioned. And North Carolina made three substitutions to UCLA's one that last break. And will that wind up being a difference with this case? And you just talked about that UCLA wants to keep up. Can they keep up with the Tar Heels who probably do sub a little more liberally? Yeah. And, and, oh. and we've talked about for years, and there is the yellow card. The shove on, I believe it was Lily Real getting position on the ball. Now yeah, it was Cox committing the foul. And Real, the player who was down. But that is the other challenge that UNC brings into a game with their fresher legs and their subs. It, one could argue it disrupts the rhythm a little bit, but boy, is it tough to go against fresh legs when you're in your final game of the season. And those were three starters all coming back on for North Carolina. Della Perita, Cook, Allie Cook, broke through with the shot. But Emmy Allen up to the task, who had those career high nine saves in the semi. Allie Cook has been very good in that nine in the second half, holding the ball there with her first touch, is able to face up, take on, doesn't quite get enough on it to beat a very well positioned Emmy Allen, who's out of being a great game. Five saves already for Allen, holding the shutout thus far and the lead for her Tar Heels. UCLA out shooting North Carolina seven to three in the second half. Hoping it is not too little too late after conceding the goal, but still plenty of time left. Just over 20 minutes to go in this national championship game in Cary, North Carolina. Two more subs to be made, one for each team coming on. One goal, the difference in this one so far. Coming in the 59th minute. Moxley had a good ball across that Avery Patterson put away. Tori Della Peruta, younger sister of Talia, now on in place of Sentinel up top, and the Tar Heels charging forward. Cox goes down. There's no foul initially, and now the whistle is blown. UCLA ball. Offside. Eventually the call against the Tar Heels. But now this ball falls right back up to the front line. Tori Della broods it to her own, her sister Talia in the box of their left foot, and Grisky snags it. Good sequence, though, by North Carolina. Getting a little lift here from the crowd as well. And that is just in the wheelhouse of Brisky. To beat her, it is going to have to be a special one, as we saw Avery Patterson do. Turner got her head to the ball. And Emmy Allen waiting until the very last second to pick it up. Look at that. Yeah, great crowd tonight in this championship match. How to sell out. And the semifinals on Friday, and now 9,500. Many of them cheering on the Tar Heels, hoping that North Carolina can bring it on home down the road. And as you would imagine, the intensity, the physicality, it is all picking up right now. Another card coming out. Oh, this is going to be a good final 16 and, uh, and change. 
Tori Della Peruta is the player. She just came on a few moments ago, picks up the yellow. Samantha Martinez just trying to institute some measure of control out here as we continue on. 16.34 to go in this NCAA championship. It's a clock issue at the moment. So remember, what you see on the clock there is the time in the game. It is very different than in the international professional game where you've got stoppage time, you've got the referee who's going to keep track of any extra time that goes off the clock. That's where stoppage time comes from. We don't get that in the college game. So you did see the clock reset in 16.42. Lemos slicing and dicing her way through. A good spin on the ball, Maroon Valencia. UCLA looking very hungry. Down a goal. Della Peruta. Lemos says hello. And called that one back for the initial foul on Tori Della Peruta. And I think the danger for UNC is if you get in too deep of the defensive stance, as they did, I thought, in that first semifinal against Florida State. They put two goals back on them when they were up 3-0, and that's the danger. you got to still be on your front foot. You can't get in too deep, deep a defensive shell if you're North Carolina in these final 15. Cox. It doesn't feel like the Tar Heels have done that to this point. They have still tried to attack as they are here. Another one, Patterson, rocket for two! She's got it! your number six center midfield and Emily Colton getting wide. And again, it's Avery Patterson on that back post. Colton with the ball in and what a beauty this is. Just deep enough for Brisky not to come and the only place really that Patterson can put it as she's fading away. Oh my goodness, what a great second goal as well for Patterson. That's really the only place, and it takes, as your weight is coming back, it takes such a delicate balance with that one. Have yourself a championship goal with Avery Patterson. Two goals off her head, as you point out, Julie, in very different fashion. The first one, she hammers home with pace. This one, a different look. She pops it up high, far away from the goalkeeper, Lauren Brisky. And a brace in the final now for Avery Patterson. Is it enough? That one coming against the run of play. UCLA have really been having a lot of the attack after going down the goal. Nine, Tori Della Peruta in favor of number 10, Rachel Jones. For UCLA, living the match, number nine, UC Sophia Cook. Rachel Cook, Jones, number, number 10, getting onto the field for the first time in this college cup Lexi Wright, for North Carolina, the veteran Bonte. in her fifth year with the Tar Heels. has been out a lot with injury. Jamaican international has that experience trying to help this team hang on for a national championship. McMahon takes her shot. UCLA team, the words they used all season long was new era. It's a new era under Marguerite Awazaza. And they would constantly ask themselves, are you the best in the country? The way you're training right now, is it the best in the country? That's the standard they wanted. Now they're here on this stage. Big challenge for this team that has had such a tremendous year as they try to climb back from two down and under 14 to go. Perry, over to Real. Oh, 
Turner's been running hard all night long for her team. Does earn the Bruins a corner. Mm, and the, the importance of these moments when you're trying to fight back into the game, you get a critical set piece. Set pieces so often game changers. Fifth of the match for UCLA. Fontes from the corner, driven at the near post. There will be a follow-up. Turner! Out of bounds. Goal kick. Remember in Valencia, excuse me, I think the player that took that shot. Let's see as it bounces back out. Yeah, it is Marin Valencia. It doesn't get a hold of it there. Almost gets the deflection. But you can see what UCLA is trying to do with that front post with a little flick initially. Cox coming off for North Carolina to some big hugs. Sentinor back in the match. Patterson, and hard to slow her down tonight, and that will be a card for sure. As it's a lot for this UCLA team to try to contain the player that has two goals. Marin Valencia picking up the yellow. And there's a sure sign of the frustration with trying to contain number 15. What a night she is having. I and mean, two world-class goals. <laughs> And UNC knew coming into this game, Anson talked a lot about it. Getting past Lauren Brisky in goal, they had to come up with something special. And Patterson has delivered twice tonight with just that. A lot of credit to the service to Moxley on the first one, Colton on the second. Because that had to be right to beat Brisky in this UCLA defense. Colton still getting wide into the almost 80 minutes into this game, running, chasing, tackling. Another one that has just had a fantastic College Cup season. Tonight, a wonderful game, getting that second assist. Well, in the regular season meeting, to Dorrance said Emily Colton was one of the best players on the field for his team, along with Sam Meza, who he does not have tonight due to injury. But Colton making her mark, assisting on the and, second and, goal. And Emily Colton plays for a former North Carolina Tar Heel legend and Pam Kalinowski down in San Diego. How about that? It all comes around. Good cross. Brisky on it. You want to watch the trophy ceremony after this match? So all the celebration that will be covered on the ESPN app. So you can be sure to find that once our coverage here on ESPN U is done. Right now, it looks like it's the Tar Heels who will be holding the trophy, but UCLA, see if they've got more to say. This team, 21 wins on the season. Came into this College Cup second in the country in wins, only behind the team they just beat in the semis, Alabama. Perry. Hanson so good in the air. Fontes to follow. Allen, UCLA on the board. <laughs> Set pieces can be difference makers. It's not always the first ball, but the second. And now different type of game as North Carolina tries to hang on to what is now a one goal lead. Oh, and what a shot that is by Fontes. It's that first one with the pace. She gets on it. Emily Allen doing anything she can. And then Lexi Wright coming across, striking it first time. Good reacts. And there is life for the Bruins. Different game now, and Lexi Wright giving her team that hope. Sophomore out of Carlsbad, California. It's her third goal in this NCAA tournament. Had a brace in round one. And you know what? She had the equalizer, Lexi Wright, in the regular season to get the comeback going for the Bruins. Darlene came in for Jones up top. Oh, 
Patterson. UCLA goal scored by number 17. Putting North Carolina in front, but right now feeling confident as runners to a right and left. Patterson will see this ball bounce in front of her. She's going to goal. Patterson with a feet this time. Didn't get the shot off. Another save for Brisky, her fifth. <laughs> There's no going to the corner flags with Avery Patterson. <laughs> She's like, nope, I'm going to try and take this one, and why not? So good with the ball with her feet and having the game she's having. And no concern for UNC going into a shell. They are pushing this one. Darlene in the corner. Pass took her there, so she'll take the opportunity, I would think, to try to milk some clock. Fouled. Job well done. Do you mind, Patterson, going for goal, taking that shot? No, no, I don't actually. Well, because the game she's having, if she can get a third and put it away, obviously you that's the thing you always weigh when you're in these final minutes and closing down a game. If you can get a legitimate shot on goal and put this game away, you gotta go. It's the shots from 35 out that you go, oh wait, what are we doing here? <laughs> a little more ill-advised, if you will. Allie Sintnor and Emily Moxley, the two over the ball. They'll play go back and forth and then go to the corner. UCLA comes away with it. Off go the Bruins down the field. Good flick over to Turner. And now we're in Valencia. Good idea to go back the other way. Left the ball a little short. And ball against right. Gives it back to North Carolina. A foul gave the Bruins the ball. Well done by Lily Wheel as well. She felt the pressure coming behind her. Pac 12 Defender of the Year, Lily the Real Deal, as the shirts <laughs> that I saw in the crowd said earlier. There's a lot there. of real deals out there as well. <laughs> That's true. Limos. There is Real. Valencia. Fontes. Soft touch, just couldn't get it past Tori Hansen. Who's held down that North Carolina defense all night long. Jaden Perry looking long. Turner, a good target to go to. Good patience. But then Lemos just has it taken off of her foot by Sentinel. Bruins get it back. Perry's been looking long last few times. She's had the ball. Nobody challenging her now. Gambone stepping forth. Desiano. Missed two years with injury. Desiano relishing this chance to get back on this stage in her graduate year, having to defend Gambone in North Carolina now. Patterson. Nothing. Patterson has had her way tonight, hasn't she? Draws the foul here. A couple of headers for goals. Little nutmeg. Who's feeling it? Substitution for Carolina. Living with number five, Melanie 
very common rays coming on for UCLA. As well as Emily Murphy, number 35, she comes on the field. One of those players that have been seeing a lot of time for North Carolina, but the Tar Heels shortened their bench in a very non Anson Dorrance move over the last few games of this NCAA tournament, but he had his iron eight, as he called them, right. going 80 minutes or more. Started quarterfinal and win against Notre Dame. Patterson has Murphy Gambon. How well can you keep it away? That's the game North Carolina trying to play now. Touches have to be clean. Pierce's wasn't. Under five to play. UCLA has cut the lead to one. They did that in the 80th minute after North Carolina led it two to nothing. Bruins seeking their second ever national championship but have to come back from the goal down to get there. North Carolina's gone a decade without one. They want that trophy. Just a few miles down the road from their hometown in Chapel Hill here in Cary. And this is where you've got to start flighting balls in, scrapping for second balls, third balls, rebounds, all of it. And UNC, conversely, is going to slow it down. Everything you see, Tori Hansen, slow it down. It's okay. Moving slowly to this ball, getting that back line up. And then you saw how Anson brought in Emily Murphy to run things down on that nine position, defensively, offensively. Smith Martina is actually going to come back and have a conversation with Emmy Allen before she puts this ball back in play. Deep breath from the redshirt freshman who said she struggled with the decision that she made to redshirt last year. Claudia Dickey, the fine goalkeeper for the Tar Heels. See those substitutions being used a little more liberally tonight. North Carolina fashion as the Heels have continued to bring on wave after wave of fresh legs after UCLA really mounted quite a push after going down the goal. McMahon getting forward a little bit more. And again, North Carolina slowly milking that time off the clock. It's been 10 years as Anson looks on since their last national title. Tar Heels trying to hang on. Turner can't quite get it across. But here is where we're certainly going to see some gambling from UCLA. Just about everybody but their two center backs sent forward. Real confident move on the ball. Under three to play. Real and UCLA not wanting to end this season without a trophy. Not with the great year that this team has had under their first year head coach. Turner the flick. Bone to Murphy. Back heel does its job. And Patterson. Mm -hmm. Well done by Avery Patterson. Knowing a little push. Maddie Desiano saying it wasn't enough, but Patterson played that well. Desiano has position. And that's a professional move by Patterson there. Desiano, one of those players, does not want to see this season come to an end. Missed two years with injuries. She's a grad student in her fifth year. Could be the last time she has on a UCLA uniform. What a magical run it has been to this point. But the Bruins wanting a little more magic. McMahon, Lemos calling for a wide open middle of the field. McMahon instead going right toward the penalty spot. Hansen there to defend. Follow up from Lemos. Took a deflection out of bounds, but off of a UCLA player. Goal kick North Carolina, the Tar Heels sensing. 
trophy celebration getting ever closer. of the two defenders, Dorsey and Hanson, both there, under a minute to play. Can UCLA find an equalizer, force us into overtime? Desiano pushing everybody into the box. Desiano, it goes out, it will be a corner. Six of the match for UCLA. Ali Limos. We see Rio with her hand in the air. Risky's up to the goalkeeper in the box to help. It is in! UCLA finds the equalizer with 16 seconds left at the death. The Bruins say not over yet. Tears from Raylan Turner as the magnitude of the moment and what it means for UCLA. More game to play in Cary, North Carolina. Oh, uh, Amy Allen, you can see the frustration on her face. All that traffic, Turner on the back post. No one able to get a body on her and she floats in off the shoulder, it looks like even. Just so many bodies, well played. And there she is on that back post. No one can get there. UCLA with 16 seconds left. There was contact in the box. That is what Emmy Allen was talking about. She felt she got pushed into the goal and couldn't get over to make a play on the ball. There was no foul called. Turner. Lily Real officially is the one who scored a bit. It sure looked like it was Turner on that back post. Who put it away. Yellow card coming out in the 90th minute against North Carolina. Turner limping a little as she gets back to her feet. And the UCLA contingent making some noise now. Five seconds left. Two overtime periods would be coming up if nothing happens here, but you never know. Ball in the box. And it is out of bounds. And everybody oh cuts your breath. Goodness. Wow. And, and you see it in Emmy Allen's face. You see it in those North Carolina players. It's in the palm of your hand. And that's going to be the challenge as they go in to this overtime, two overtime periods. North Carolina was 16 seconds away from a national championship, but instead off the corner kick, this ball, this header, ties us at two overtime, coming your way from Cary. What a finish to regulation here in Cary, North Carolina. Let's go Bruins indeed coming from two goals down. UCLA scoring two goals in the final 10 minutes. Remember we were scoreless at halftime while well, things changed after that. <laughs> Here's that first goal with the Moxley ball across to Patterson. What a beauty that is. And then, as we saw again, you get Avery Patterson on that back post. Good things are going to happen this time. It's Colby fading away. The only spot you can put in. And Patterson, of course, finds it. That's another beauty. You, and then UNC 2-0 up. You're thinking everything's working out fine. But then it's the Sunshine. Oh, it's the second goal. I thought we had Sunshine Fontes. This is the second goal with Raylan Turner. Traffic in front of Emmy Allen. Jaden Perry matching up against Allen. Unable to get a path to that ball. And Turner with the game tire. 
with 16 seconds left. So new rules in college soccer this year. First of all, there was no overtime in the regular season. Now that we're in the postseason, it's back, but it's different. It used to be set in victory. Now we are playing two 10 minute periods, no matter what, so settle in folks. 20 more minutes to go from Cary, North Carolina, no matter what happens, if we're still tied after those two overtime periods, we go to the penalty kick shootout. And, and as we said before going to break, the challenge is going to be for these North Carolina players who think they have it in the palm of their hands. How do you recover from that? And you saw the faces in the huddle. There was a lot of sad faces. How and you know, how do you do it? And you know, Anton is in there saying, it's okay, this is not over. We were the better team. This is the speech you're giving. Recover, we fight, we scrap, we battle. And he is brilliant at those kind of speeches. But UCLA, with 16 seconds left, what a turnaround that was. Bruins trying to keep that momentum. This is Ali Cook, number 33 on the ball. And the one goal you didn't see just there was one that started off a free kick. So both of UCLA's goals coming in the final 10 minutes of the match in regulation, both starting off set pieces. One started off a free kick, one coming off the corner kick. Talk about turning that storyline around as that was an area they've struggled to defend this season. Now making it their own. And really UCLA's game turn when UNC scored. They had to start playing. They had to start stepping. They had to be more aggressive. And they finally got on that front foot. They're going to want to keep that same momentum in this overtime. I'm sure that was the conversation. Cox trying to win it for North Carolina. Chiandela Peruta. Find Sentinor, Ali Sentinor with five Bruins around her. There's gotta be space somewhere if she can get away, but she can't. Little reset for both teams, but as you said, it is UCLA who doesn't wanna to reset too much. They had the <laughs> momentum to even force us into overtime. 16 seconds to go, 16 seconds away from North Carolina hoisting the trophy. And UCLA says not yet. Bruins out shooting the Tar Heels 13 to six in the second half. Mind you, it was two nil until the 80th minutes. Mm -hmm. So two goals in those final 10. That is not gonna leave one Anson Dorrance happy at all. We used to talk, call it the big five, the final five of every half, the first five of every half, you lock it in. Patterson has the two goals for North Carolina, trying to set up Sentmore. There was some contact there that seemed questionable, but nobody really arguing it. Colton, Moxley on the run. Moxley keeps it in. Oh, Frisky is getting out of here. And immediately she wants her team going the other direction. Turner had the game time goal tonight, had the game winner in Chapel Hill to dethrone the men number one ranked Tar Heels. And these two teams met in September. UCLA came from behind in that match as well. Desiano. No whistle by our referee Samantha Martinez played just at the edge of the box. Nice. Hanson played it cleanly.
Got some players stretching out. I mean, it's a cool night, but a long night. And Lemos is coming off the field. Wright comes on in her place. Mm. Turner getting the stretch. And Lemos rarely gets a rest. You could tell she was in some discomfort as well coming off. Allie Cook just getting stretched out behind the bench right now. Right, the player who came on in her place. Had the first goal for UCLA in this match in the 80th. Here's McMahon getting forward. Bruins haven't really had that as a weapon most of the night, but when it is there, McMahon getting into the box is a good thing for UCLA. Yeah, and when McMahon gets forward, as we saw in that semifinal game, goal and assist. Look like a corner to me, actually, coming off that defender. Goal kick the call, and there you see Lemos getting stretched important piece for UCLA in the midfield. A freshman who's started every match this season. North Carolina cannot keep it more. Gave it away. Back Patterson, of course the player who wins it back. Sittnor has Cox in the middle. Sittnor. Eventually stopped. It's a team effort, though. Stop the freshman. The pace in which Sentinel runs at players is so fun to watch. Between Patterson in behind her, Sentinel leading that line. One of several players on this North Carolina team with some youth international experience, Sentinel. Part of the US U20 team at the World Cup earlier this year. McMahon cutting it inside this time. Fontes, Bruins will want her closer to the goal. McMahon to right, wide open, right, floats it into the box. Nobody can get there. Patterson is the engine on Avery Patterson ever. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> and here is that chance for UCLA. Quincy McMahon getting forward more, which was always a good sign. Amy Allen making sure no one was on the end of that but her gloves. Six saves in the match for Allen. Five saves on the other end for Brisky. Hansen, a freshman the last time North Carolina was in the final of the College Cup. They lost it on penalties. It was hers that was saved. A devastating moment that she has come back from beautifully, leading this team this year. And now trying to help them through this overtime period. Who knows, we could see ourselves in shootout territory again. We do still have Jen Hill time Drake. to play. I'm How just, dare you I'm speak it out out such there. things. I'm <laughs> just putting it out there. We want goals. We do want goals. We got them in the second half for no sure. Who wants to win a national title on PKs? <laughs> Lexi Wright maybe gets one here for UCLA. Looking for the corner. Allen lays out. Lexi Wright coming alive in this overtime. Loves to go on that left foot, and what a good reaching save that is by Allen. Gets into position, sets, and then a fingertip save around the ball post. Well, remember what happened on the last corner kick for UCLA. It would be the game time goal in the 90th minute. And again, you can see the traffic in front of Emmy Allen. UCLA planting a player there every time. Fontes, Allen, got a glove to it. Still there for UCLA. Now it's touched away. Edge of the box. McMahon, no, nope, there is a whistle. And 
Hansen really slow to get up. And this is that scrum in the box. Traffic, Allen gets the first hand on it. And that's where you see Tori Hansen coming across to clear that out of the way. Step into the ball, good clear. Up and walking and the crowd is cheering. Looks like she took one right to the boot and ankle as she cleared that. Oh, what a story for this player. Freshman year, steps up, it's fantastic. Had to be put in that spot of not playing a minute in the championship game last year, that year, 2019. Took penalty that was saved. Stanford won it, but now one of the leaders on this North Carolina team having to hold down the defense as UCLA attacking. Looking on the corner. UCLA will get there quickly. Under a minute to play in this first overtime period. It's been Fontes or Lemos to take the corners for UCLA all night. Lemos had to go out. Mary Carmen Reyes coming across. Fontes' is ball popped up. Again, there's contact. It could not be hung on to by Allen. McMahon says, let's go again. Flicks forward, nine, right running eight, after it. Allen is seven, as well, and six, it'll stay 2-2 two, two, as we three, get set two, for our second one, overtime period. Zero. And if I'm UCLA and we have more corner kicks, they gotta be thinking, they gotta put some numbers in front of Emmy Allen because that is where they're having that success on those corner kicks. Here's another look at it. You got Mary Carmen Reyes in there. You got some bodies in there again, unable to hold and bobble. And if you're UNC, I think you got to start bodying some of those UCLA players out to give your goalkeeper a little bit of help. Yeah, that not a lot being called when there has been some contact. and. There let's was contact yep. on the goal, Julie. Yeah, let's go back to that goal in with 16 seconds left. We get that goal line look. Look at Jaden Perry putting some contact in. Bodying Emmy Allen out of the way. We have seen that call before. I think actually that's a good no call in that situation because you got to get a UNC player on Jaden Perry. And that's a tactic all teams take. They get in front of the goalkeeper, they body them up, they get in their way so they can't come with a clean box. And the success UCLA has had on those set pieces shows you how effective it is. See David Nahas, assistant coach, and Anson Dorrance there in the middle of the huddle for North Carolina, getting them ready for these final 10 minutes. Their messages here. What they're going to try to do. I, I, knowing how D UNC is wired, their DNA is all about you got to, you got to go, you got to go for this. They don't want to play for penalty kicks. They're, they want to send numbers. They're going to be high risk, high reward. And you got to love that about Anson in this UNC program. Conversely, I think if you're UCLA, they have had that momentum. They had it again in that first 10 minutes of overtime. I'm sure that discussion in the huddle is don't take your foot off the pedal as well. You may yell at me for bringing things like this up again, but I will point out to you that in the NCAA tournament, North Carolina leads UCLA 4-1-1. That one happened to come in, that one draw, in their last meeting. It was a 2018 quarterfinal. I don't know what the score was. <laughs> two to two. It was two to two. <laughs> Went to penalties. North Carolina won it. Just for reference. Did they score two goals <laughs> in the dying moments of a game? <laughs> Look, I don't have that exact detail in I'm front on, of me. Shin. I'm going to guess not, though. You're not quite than this that, dramatic. <laughs> what a finish. To regulation. I mean, this game, 
I think just about everybody, but maybe those wearing the UCLA uniform thought it was over. And that young woman right there, Raylan Turner, her goal, breaking the hearts of the Tar Heel fans, forcing overtime with 16 seconds to go in regulation. She's on the sideline at the moment. Will be able to come back in in this overtime period, should she choose? And you think she nope. certainly would choose. Yep. No Ali Lemos as well, still on that sideline. There will undoubtedly be moments for both teams. They'll have to go without their stars as they just try to make it through all of the time extra now that they're having to play. Gambone on the field for North Carolina, up to Centnor. Moxley. North Carolina led this match two to nothing until the 80th minute. Avery Patterson had a brace. Thought she had her Tar Heels with the trophy. She'll try, but not on target. The way Avery Patterson is playing, I would say get the ball in her feet and have your way. It is fine. Take on, shoot, or head. We can find her with her head. Yeah. That might be okay too. Well, she scored both goals. Sophia Cook. Freshman out of Huntington Beach, California, back to Fontes. Right, looking central, good touch. Gambone broke it up initially, Gilday. Step in from Dorsey, wants another ring, Julia Dorsey. Match that lacrosse ring that she already earned this year. Cook to Alley Cook. Nervy defending, but didn't look that way. Dorsey handling things fine. Patterson pushed down. That is a foul. We got not just one, but two UCLA players down. Here is the Alley Cook shove in the back. It's tough when you get to this point, isn't it, <laughs> Jules, when your your muscles start acting up on you and you just have to try to figure out a way to tough it through. Easier said than done as Turner comes back on the field. And that is Lexi Wright. like Lemos is ready to come back on the field for UCLA. It should be a difference maker UCLA in the midfield. Leading the match, number 17, Lexi Wright. Entering number 66, you know, Wayland Turner. It just highlights how many minutes you do less subbing on that UCLA side than you do for UNC. And you do see a little bit more fatigue, of course, because they have had that load. Players like Sophia Cook coming off the bench. We'll have to carry a little more of it here in overtime. Gilday, senior for the Bruins. Ball goes out. It is a North Carolina throw. Eventually it'll be Emerson Elgin to come over and take it. Oh, Patterson has taken a beating here. I mean, good clean challenges, but she's still getting the worst of it. Mm. Cook. Got herself back up onto her feet, good enough to earn a corner. 
always a dangerous moment as UCLA has proven on set pieces in this game. Let's see how they shape up again on Amy Allen. There it is, Mary Carmen Reyes goes in front of her. And there is, as we saw in the second goal, Jaden Perry taking position. And that's where Hanson has to come in. They got to buy her out. Fontes puts it up, and Hanson hits it out. Oh, you have to hit that right, don't you? You got to get that right. Oh, what a dangerous look. So easily can go into the back of your goal. The ninth corner kick, and again, Allen unable to get an angle on it. Fontes again with the last header. Kept out for now. I'm not sure how. Oh, they're going to look at this. So I told you earlier, we do have video review. One of the things they can look at, did the ball fully cross the line in a goal or no goal situation. That is exactly what Samantha Martinez is going to take a look at here. And here is Turner on the back post. Doesn't look from that angle like it got fully over the line. See, from the highest one of the ball has to cross the line. Oh, and it's going to be right there off the knee, whether that one went across. Here's another angle. Right there. Of course, much harder to tell if it fully breaks the plane in the air, but Elgin, Gambone, both defending on the goal line. Oh, goodness gracious. That looks like it, it's hard to see from that angle, but it doesn't look like the whole ball went over the line. Does feel like it would be difficult to definitively make that call with the looks that we're seeing. And that is in the eyes of the referee, not a goal. And there is all the different angles they're looking at. That bottom left, I think that's a very good call and good that they have that goal line technology there. And UNC hangs on by the thinnest of margins. My With goodness. five minutes to go in this one. And if you're UCLA, you're saying, Let's get some more corners. How dangerous have they been? Turner getting her head to it again. Off the service from Fontes. That was the game tying combination. Actually, Lemos to Turner in the waning seconds of regulation. Under five to play in our second overtime period. A reminder, these are the things that can be reviewed when it comes to goal or no goal. Samantha Martinez checking to see if that ball did indeed cross the line fully. She could not deem that it did by the video she saw. So on we play, tied it to. Tar Heels, who led it to nothing, have had difficulty keeping it away from UCLA. Bruins attacking, earning those set piece chances for themselves. Dorsey. Sophia Cook. Out the space and the runner and McMahon. McMahon, Turner, 
Lost her footing. McMahon still pushing for UCLA. Ball in the box. The turn, the shot saved by Allen. Follow up, good! UCLA takes the lead. Allen makes the initial save, but gives up a rebound. And the Bruins there to pounce on it. And there it is, Mary Carmen Reyes. You see the joy, the tears of joy in her, in her eyes. Mexican national team player, tons of experience on this UCLA side. And could she be the difference maker with a remarkable comeback by this Bruin team? It's the deflection off the Allen save, and it's Reyes, the first to the ball with a tight angle. That's not an easy finish from that angle. Cook, no one steps. She says, why not? And that is an excellent finish by Reyes with a tight angle that all Allen almost gets to. The goal scored in the 107th minute. What a turnaround by this UCLA team. Again, it was 2-0 going into the 80th minute. Mary Carmen Reyes not giving up on the play, following up the shot, getting the rebound. And the fifth year Bruin trying to send her team off with the national championship. She was one of two on this team that played in 2019. Last time the Bruins were in the College Cup, they lost in the semifinal that year. Tar Heels trailing for the first time in this match now. Two minutes and change to change that. So difficult for this North Carolina team that was so close to NCAA championship number 22. 16 seconds was all they had to survive in regulation. They couldn't. It was Raylan Turner who had the game tying goal and eventually set up all that emotion you see right there in the face of Mary Carmen Reyes, what that means to her to put her team in front. Not over yet, though. North Carolina looking to punch back. There is no whistle, crowd wanting one. Plenty of attacking options for this Tar Heel team and it is going to be all players a go now to get up, try to find an equalizer. I was wondering, Julie, if a team has ever come back from being down two goals in the national championship to win. They haven't. Mm. Potentially that happens for One the minute. first time tonight in a team that is being led by a coach in her first year as a head coach. Something first else that year. has never happened. But talk about a magic carpet ride. <laughs> this whole season has been. For Marguerite Alazaza. <laughs> look no further than Mary Carmen Reyes, who at the moment, her goal, the go-ahead, could be not only the game winner, the championship winner for UCLA if the Bruins can indeed hang on to this comeback that they completed down two goals in the 80th minute of regulation. North Carolina had victory snatched away in the final seconds of regulation. Can they do it to UCLA? No, this ball's gonna go back to Brisky. 
What an incredible comeback. UCLA enters a new era under, under Marguerite Alizaza, and they are national champions. Congratulations to the UCLA Bruins, the 2022 Division I Women's Soccer National Champions. What a run. And you see the disappointment in Julia Dorsey's face going for her second ring. So close for North Carolina. That is just a gut punch. Up to nil. It's right there. And in the 80th minute, it's Lexi Wright. With 16 seconds left, it's Raylan Turner and then Mary Carmen Reyes to finish it off. And what a turnaround for UCLA in head coach. First year as a head coach, Marguerite. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Can you, coach, just take us into this moment right now for you, for this program, and how on earth you did it? Yeah, I, I'm speechless. I'm absolutely speechless, but honestly, I'm just amazed by this team and the grit that they showed and the character they showed today. I even had my doubts at 2-0, but... <laughs> Quite honestly, no one on the field did, and they just found a way. And you could see how much, just looking at them now, I think they're all in tears. Thankfully, the Gatorade's hiding mine, but <laughs> they're just so happy, and they love each other so much. It, this is such a special moment. Coach, I, I, in your first year <laughs> ever as a head coach, I mean, the ride you've had in this season, how do you even put this into words, and how do you how do you carry on? Should you just retire after this meeting? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the joke. Our, our AD Martin is here, and I'm about to tell him about my retirement. But this is, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, she's got to have that moment. <laughs> no, this is incredible. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> and cold. Very cold now. <laughs> You've said all season long that you have challenged your team to be the best in the country. When you were training, are you doing it the best in the country? You are the best in the country tonight. Yeah. Is that soaked wow. in yet? No, it has not soaked in. I am soaked, but it has not soaked in. That, this is just so special. I know this is something that we will never, ever forget. And obviously, the bar has now been set really high, but this season has been just absolutely amazing and something I will cherish forever. Uh, so much to be proud of on your side. Congratulations, Coach, on a fantastic season. Go enjoy it with the players. Thank you so much. Wow. I mean, think about that. Think about that. And, and let's look at this game-winning goal by Mary Carmen Reyes, who, as you said, Jen, one of the most experienced players on the team. You could see what it means to her in this moment. It's the alley cook. She turns, she faces, no one stops. Emmy Allen with the rebound. And with that tight angle, Reyes, the first to get there, making sure that it was the Bruins hoisting that trophy up. And what, what a turnaround by this team at Again, 2 0 down, 80 minutes in. You just think, you know, it goes through your mind as a player, gosh, what a season, but it's not our it's not our game. And that had to have gone through the mind of those Bruins, but in that moment to turn it around as they did is something they will all look back on and there will be tears for many years.